Roman karate, who will tell us about the uh, covering the mention using the uh, foreign karate. Okay, so I, I thank the organizers for this uh, interesting conference. Unfortunately, my topic is, uh, well, it has nothing to do with number theory, and, yeah, but uh, I hope it has some relation to combinatorics. But well, the content of the next slide, I think, might be uh, familiar to many people here. Actually, there are two theorems. One, the next theorem, and the other, uh, Nasta Kuratovsky Mazukevich theorem, uh, which, which are usually known uh, to combinatorialists and uh, to people who do some economics. Uh, those theorems, well, in, in terms of the general topology, they just assert that the covering dimension of the Euclidean space is well, what we expect is uh, if it is Rn, then the dimension is n. So, uh, how, so how is it stated? Uh, for example, if a cube is covered by some family of compact sets such that the multiplicity is at most n, multiplicity is the number of times that any point is covered, the maximum number of times that any point is covered, then those sets cannot be too small. One of those sets has to touch uh, two opposite faces of the cube. For example, I, I will write some examples. I'll draw some uh, examples in the two-dimensional case. So if we have covered multiplicity by, by some sets in the plane, and we want to cover the square so that every point is covered at, at, at most twice, then one of the sets has to be large, it has to touch both, or, or uh, uh, either both uh, these sides, either both these sides. Well, there are more, more precise statements, but uh, we just consider uh, this kind of argument. And uh, the other theorem, the KKM theorem, as it is usually called, a sort of similar thing. If we cover, for example, in the play, a triangle uh, with again, with compact sets, or maybe they, or maybe all open sets, it, it doesn't matter too much in this question. For example, compact sets, and if every point is covered at most twice, then one of the sets has to be sufficiently large, it has to uh, touch all the sides of the triangle. So one set. So one of the sets has to touch all the sides of the triangle and cannot be put more. So the, the, the idea is that we can cover the Euclidean space of some part of it, the cube or the simplex, so that the multiplicity of the covering is small and the sizes of uh, the sets are also small. It, it isn't. So, so that's the content of those theory. And uh, as for the proof, uh, well, here is the relation to combinatorics in my talk. Uh, there are two uh, lemmas uh, which are uh, purely combinatorial and allow to prove these theorems. Uh, the most known, I think, uh, is Sterner's lemma in the case of the simplex. So, for example, in the plane we triangulate uh, the triangle by smaller triangles. color the vertices in three colors, for example, yeah, in, in, in three colors, we will give some assumptions, and we conclude that there is a small triangle each, uh, which contains all three colors. Well, I, I won't uh, make the full statement here, because it actually doesn't, uh, it is not needed in my talk, but uh, you, you might know that uh, there is uh, this kind of proof for, for the for the KTM theorem. And for uh, the next theorem, there is a similar proof with a so called Kemp's lemma or whatever. Uh, well, I, I won't explain it in detail. Uh, but we, we are going to use another approach and also give some proofs for both the theorems and maybe for some other uh, theorems. Well, let's start from the moment. Well, we are going to use some a little portion of algebraic geometry, namely the uh, toric geometry of some. But, but actually we are using 
uh, they are in a very particular form, so all the, all the constructions and definitions are given almost explicitly. So we study the uh, complex projective space of dimension n, and we map it to the n-dimensional simplex by some obvious formulas. We take the squares of the coordinates, the homogeneous coordinates, and we divide by the sum of squares to normalize so, so that everything is in the simplex. Okay, and uh, another thing we want to consider is a uh, uh, slightly more uh, difficult is uh, the scalar form on the uh, projective space. The scalar form is uh, the, the differential form of rank 2, which is closed, and the what, uh, what else we have to know about it? it is, first, it is closed. Next, its nth power is non zero because it represents the volume form up to some constant. And uh, uh, so it's uh, cohomology class, and the cohomology class of its and power is non-zero. This is, uh, this is some, something very standard for those who try algebraic geometry. I mean, the first chapter of like, you know, any book of algebraic geometry, right? Okay, so uh, I hope this explains something. And now we want to, uh, to, ar to argue in spirit of the steady theory, actually. We uh, uh, declare some, uh, now we switch to open subsets, because uh, I told you that closed and open, if it, everything is closed in the covering, then everything can be changed to be open, and or vice versa, so we consider open subsets, for example, and uh, an open subset of a manifold, a manifold uh, now can be Considered to be the project, but we will consider uh, some other manifold later. So, uh, on such a Keller manifold, we consider some open subset and we call it inessential if uh, this uh, closed Keller form is actually exact on this uh, on this open subset. That means that this omega can be represented as differential of something. Differential, differential of a uh, form of rank one. So in this case, we call this uh, subset inessential. And the crucial fact is that if uh, we have several inessential subsets, then this is the, the main fact used by the standard engineering one of the theory, actually. And uh, then, uh, uh, well, it isn't correct, actually. What I had to write it the cohomology class vanishes on every y, then its power vanishes on the u. So what is written on the slide is slightly incorrect. But the idea is that if the sets are inessential, then their union, if there is some controlled number of them, m sets, then their union uh, has uh, some related property. The cohomology class may, class may not vanish, so the form may not be exact, but its m power is exact. So th that's the idea. So it can be actually proven by, for example, by writing the equalities and multiplying them, and then uh, noting that in this case we, we indeed, uh, so every multiple is vanishes on its corresponding on its respective sub subset, and the, the, the whole product vanishes for the whole union, and uh, so it allows to express omega to the power of m as a differential sum. So that's the idea. And now we uh, also we uh, actually will need some results which can be considered as somewhat combinatorial, actually. Uh, the idea is, is as follows. That if we have a covering of some good topological space, now for par par compact space, as it is called here, which has a bounded multiplicity, so no point is covered more than n times, then actually this uh, covering can be refined uh, to have one more property. It can be refined uh, so that the refined family uh, has a 
that has a tolerance in n colors with the following property. If we have two uh, sets of the family of the same color, they do not intersect at all. So every point, if it is covered by something, then all the colors of the covered sets must be different. So it also implies that the positivity is that was n. But this is a stronger property, but this uh, theorem of Parley actually actually implies that uh, if we just have bounded multiplicity, then we have to cover the property for free. Uh, the idea is, the idea actually under this lemma is, mm, well, if, well if, for those who know some topology, uh, I can explain it in more detail. If we consider a covering, then there is a norm of this covering. And for the norm of the covering, we can take this polycentric subdivision. A polycentric subdivision of a uh, sequential complex of some dimension is a uh, sequential complex of the same dimension, but uh, its vertices are naturally colored into the corresponding number of colors. And so the, the, that's the idea under this lemma, actually. So to make somehow a polycentric subdivision of the north end, then, then to see what uh, of what all what sets are correspond to the to the new vertices of the network. Okay. So we just uh, assume the lemma. So now, if we are, if we are given uh, by some reason we are given a uh, covering with bounded multiplicity, then we uh, we assume that it is colored properly. So it, uh, some color from one to n is uh, attached to every uh, open set, and uh, if the open sets have the same color, they not. Uh, so this, uh, in particular, this explains why uh, coloring can arise. I mean, in those combinatorial lemmas, how we pass to, to color. Uh, actually, th there are different ways to pass to color, but uh, this is one of them. Okay, now, uh, okay. So uh, the proposition means that if we have a covering with bounded uh, multiplicity, then the union covering of some subset of uh, uh, what? You, you, it is not the covering of every unit, it is a family of subsets. This is also correct in my slide. So we, we do not assume that the union of U may be M and may be M. It is not the whole M. Okay. Assume this, uh, this uh, family of subsets has bounded multiplicity bounded by M, then we conclude that uh, omega to the power M vanishes, I mean, vanishes in cohomology of that unit. So this is, this is clear from the previous facts. So here, okay, we can also consider closed coverings. Some check cohomology may help us in this set. Uh, so we do not, uh, actually, we don't discuss it here, mm -hmm. because open covering or closed covering will be used whatever we want. So now, uh, another thing is that we can use the So now the goes the proof of the KKM theory. Uh, we consider a closed covering, some of that covering is closed. And we have a closed covering of the six place. And then this covering is so you lift it to the covering of uh, the project space by the moment class, which which uh, are explicit there. Okay, what uh, what if what if every set of the covering of the simplex uh, had no intersection with some of the faces? This means that the corresponding subset of uh, the projective space did not intersect some coordinate hyperplane. So a coordinate hyperplane is something which goes to the Face at all, all the simplex under the moment plane. So it doesn't intersect the coordinate hyperplane, but uh, it's, it's basic in algebraic geometry that, that omega that Keller for omega that we consider it is one correct dual to the hyperplane. So it's, it's some, sometimes it is called the hyperplane divisor or something like this. So it is a you know, one correct dual to a hyperplane. So it means that if every set V of the covering of the simplex is 
in essential in the sense that it doesn't understand our face, and then its pre image is inessential in the sense that uh, omega is uh, exact. So we just uh, have uh, we have a, fa a family of uh, the closed mm -hmm. and closed subsets which cover the whole projective space. The multiplicity is at most n, and all of them are inessential. And we conclude uh, it is not written there. I will write it on the blackboard, and we conclude that the topology of omega to the power of n actually vanishes. formula in dimension one and we, we just take the Cartesian product of such methods. So it is clear what one is it? And what is a hyperplane divisor in, in this situation actually? Uh, well it, 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 this is a very simple fact about toric varieties and it can be proved by hand. Actually that if you consider the embedding of that product into the projective space of appropriate dimension it is called Then we will see that the, 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 the hyperplane divisor can be realized as um, a union of images of some faces of the cube. For example, in, in two dimensional case, we have a square, and we must consider these faces and these faces, and consider their pre images in the variety. And if we take their union, then this is the hyperplane divisor. Of course, we could consider this pair or this pair or that or the other pair and uh, in, in, in the larger dimension it uh, works according that we have to consider n faces which are usually perpendicular and they or in other words they have a common vertex and they are, they are limited in that form a hyperplane divisor and now what we see assume the we cover the cube, the multiplicity is at most n, and every set doesn't touch any pair of all the faces of the cube. What it means? It means that any set doesn't touch uh, some faces of every direction. So every set that doesn't touch some, some, I mean, uh, some uh, configuration of this kind, I mean, some n usually perpendicular uh, faces. So th this just means that after looking to the uh, toric variety, it gives a, an inessential set that does not touch some hyperplane, some representative of the equivalence class of hyperplane devices. So it is inessential, and then the theorem follows like the previous theorem. And just uh, it just uh, it's similar. Of course, uh, well, of course, you could uh, ask the question: Well, why? Why? <laughs> But why this all is done? Because those old theorems had very simple proofs, actually. And uh, here we use some very high machinery. So somehow it happened that uh, some other theorems, I mean, some extensions of these theorems, uh, uh, follow from the same approach just for free. And uh, uh, well, 
well, this is the, the, there was some discussion that I, I can reference. This one question was initiated by the Nobel Prize the one uh, mark overflow was, and we discussed with him some approaches, and I actually uh, I found that this kind of proof, which which was also suitable for this question, uh, and uh, some other uh, you know, some other theorems will will also be shown. Okay. So what is the theorem? Well, the theorem is rather tricky, but still it, it is proved this way. So if again we have a family of closed subsets for the simplest, now we don't assume that they cover the closed simples. This is just a family of subsets. Let them be closed. And let the multiplicity be a closed case. Let the multiplicity be a closed case and let all of them be essential in the sense that none of them that touches all the faces of the sequence. So they are essential in the medium that I did before. And uh, then we conclude that if we consider the complement to this, to the union of this family, then this complement, of course, it is big, and moreover, some connected component of this complement intersects every k dimensional phase of the sequence. So, well, why it is needed, I actually the matter who wanted to prove some combinatorial result from this level, but he failed. Not fair, but he didn't. So, so, so I will not explain why it is needed, but it was uh, asked and it was answered. So that this kind of theorem also is also possible to prove. Okay, where is the proof? Okay, the proof is given in one line here, so everything is the same. We consider the complement, I mean the complement in the rhetoric variety. We know that some power of the value for omega does not vanish on this complement. So then it follows that it does not vanish on, on some of its connected components, which is very trivial. We can prove what we can. Uh, and all, we can. All, we can also prove something like this uh, for the depth theorem about the cube. Uh, well, well, okay, let, me, <laughs> let me read. Again, we, we cover a cube and we assume that uh, no covering set touches a pair of opposite faces as an index theorem. And we assume the covering multiplicity to be small, to be k, n or less than. Then again, we, we can consider the, the union and the, in the complement we can find the connected component, a connected subset that, uh, and we uh, can also uh, show that it, uh, it intersects something. What, what, is, what is intersected? We can choose a k-dimensional coordinates of space, and we can consider uh, all faces, all k-dimensional faces all k-dimensional faces that are parallel to the coordinates of space, the number of them is some 2 to the power n minus k. And uh, that connected component will intersect every face parallel to that. So this is, uh, it, it, it may be not so interesting, but still we, we can. Also, well, after some thinking, we can also prove the following result. Actually, here we can consider arbitrary simple polytope. And uh, well, if, 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 I will not give definitions here, but there is a, the idea is that for the simple polytope, we also can produce a toric variety. It won't be smooth anymore, but actually all the needed properties hold. Uh, so, and from considering the toric variety, we conclude that for a simple polytope, if it is covered by closed uh, subsets and the multiplicity is at most is dimension, is at most n, then sum of the sets uh, touches sum n plus 1 phases of the polygon. So it's clear that this uh, theorem gives, for the cube it gives the text theorem, for the simple set gives uh, KTM theorem. So somehow the theoretical approach uh, shows that uh, everything is so that this theorem can be stated where it where it ends Okay, also I want to I want to mention another theorem which has a which has a proof along these lines. 
But it, well, I, I also had a proof of this theorem previously by somewhat different <laughs> argument, but that, now that argument, I mean, after these observations, the, the, the previous argument can be called the real Doric approach, and now uh, we, for example, can uh, apply the, the, the complex Doric approach, which we wish was the approach in my head. So the idea is that, assume we have a, a simplex of certain dimension, now simplex uh, has bigger dimension than usual than in previous results. It is d plus 1 times r minus 1, where d and r are some positive factors. And assume we map this simplex to, uh, to something. So something is a d-dimensional, for example, a metric space. Not maybe open, it doesn't. It is not needed, but d-dimensional metric space. So some quite arbitrary object. Then we can conclude that uh, if you consider that there is a point in that metric space, which is covered by images of all the uh, t times r minus 1 dimensional uh, faces of the simplex. So the idea is that we, if we consider all the faces of the simplex of uh, certain dimension, which is not full dimension, but slightly, uh, slightly smaller, around t over t plus 1 times smaller, uh, then those uh, faces actually has to intersect after this map. So after this map, all those two faces uh, have a common point. And actually, this is uh, indeed a uh, generalization of the simple theorem, or the simple central point theorem, which it's the, what is the idea of the central point theorem. So if you have a family of points in Rd, then we can choose a central point, C, uh, such that if we uh, separate some half space from this central point, then in this separated half space, we have at most, um, oh, no. I mean, oh, oh, on the other side, if we uh, have a half space which contains the central point, then here we have at least one over t plus one fraction of all the points. So let x be, be the point set. So that, that's the statement actually. So it can be it can be rephrased differently. If uh, we have some number of points, <laughs> then it is possible to choose a point, a central point C, such that if we have a subset of cardinality approximately this, and then uh, this, the convex hull of this subset contains the central point. So now it, it becomes more clear why this is a generalization. So we have every subset of some cardinality approximately. I mean, the, the, the precise numbers are there. And uh, approximately this, and all such subsets uh, have to spend this central point spend mean, meaning the convex half as we contain the central point. So as usual, in, in this kind of uh, results, actually if, so, so th th this results in the particular case if the map of the uh, simplex uh, to the space, here W is just a Euclidean space and simplex is simplex of upper dimension. And, and the map is given by mapping the vertices to the point of X. So every vertex goes to this point and uh, everything other is just extended linearly to the whole surface. So the map is linear and for linear maps this theorem is uh, precisely at the central point. And again this theorem also has a proof in that fashion. So but it, it is uh, just a bit harder so I just sketch it for people have no time. So so maybe I will just say a few words about the proof. The idea is to cover well, what we know about W. It is a metric space of small dimension. If it is a small dimension, then it can be covered by small subsets with small multiplicity. With multiplicity at most, say, n plus 1. Oh, d plus, d plus 1. The dimension of d plus 1. So we consider the pre images again in the, but not in the simplex, but uh, already in the projective space. And we, 
probably similar with the multiplication of the differential forms, we can uh, conclude that omega to the power of m does not vanish on some of the privileges, on some of the privileges. But those privileges are privileges of smaller and smaller sets, and if we use compactness for the limit, we just conclude that the image of some point <coughs> must have in chef cohomology must have omega to the power of m not vanishing and actually this means that it intersects every projective subspace of appropriate dimension and the projective subspace of appropriate dimension corresponds to phase of the symbol. So that, that's the idea. So but I think I have to stop here because it doesn't work. Thank you. Somewhere. <laughs> so maybe it will be clear. 